saying that he was going to deliver in, uh, down in Central Florida. He wanted to know where I was you know, positioned at, where home base was. And I says, well, Brooksville. And he says, well, this load's going to Brooksville. So you know what that means, right, folks? Uh, so we met up this morning, as you saw, over there at the old 75 Chrome Shop. And we're going to cruise back into Brooksville and uh, going to see what else we can get into. So how are we doing today, Mr. A. Slinger? Enjoying the beautiful sunshine down here in Florida and warmer temperatures. And I left home, we was getting a little bit of snow up there. So it's always nice to come down here this time of year and roll around with some windows down and soak up a little sunshine. Yes, sir. Tell me about it. We got some good weather right now. Uh, man, it's usually nice, but uh, can't complain. So we're going to jump right into the stuff that we want to talk about, you know, uh, seeing your truck here, the one that we're looking at now, I've seen it at shows many a times, I've never got the pleasure of rolling next to you, so why don't you go ahead and tell all the folks that uh, may not know what you got there, tell us all about it. Sure, uh, my truck's a 1996 Peterbilt 379 extended hood, when they uh, implemented the e-log deal about eight years ago, I went on the hunt and uh, found I wanted a clean frame truck with a Detroit in it. Uh, with doing the car hauling, we don't pull a lot of weight, so my main goal was fuel mileage. Bought this thing out of California. It was a tandem axle with a 63-inch stand-up on it. Brought it in, and we stripped it down to bare frame rails and uh, basically built a new truck out of it uh, when we built it the first time. And uh, overhauled the 60 series in it, uh, made a single axle out of it, put a 13-speed in it. Uh, did a, uh, originally did a set of 308 rears underneath of it. Uh, the truck will get eight miles to a gallon average doing what we do on a daily basis. Uh, when I'm using it for my trailer business, I buy and sell uh, trailers. And if I'm uh, going after empty trailers and stuff like that, I can get up very closer to 10 miles to a gallon out of it. So it works great for, for my business and my purposes. Well, talk about specking a truck out. If you got that exactly the way you want, then even uh, got the, the end result, the uh, fuel mileage, the way you want there too, right? Yes, sir. We have made a few changes to it over the years. When I first built the truck, I did a 48-inch sleeper on it with a wraparound couch in the back. Uh, many of y'all may have seen me out at different shows and stuff with my family. I've got four little girls that uh, used to go with us everywhere we went. We was doing 13, 14 shows a year, so that couch worked great for, for doing that and traveling as a family downside to it was it was horrible to try to sleep on the rest of the year and I didn't have any storage space and uh, I had always admired the four state sleepers that Brian and them built the Mercury clones uh, they call it the hideout uh, that four states out of Joplin was building and uh, unfortunately they was always kind of out of my budget and uh, ended up uh, when they quit making them here a couple years ago uh, I ended up making a deal and, and buying the display model that they had in the showroom floor and uh, took it and uh, took it to Chris Gephardt up in Central Illinois. He put the interior in it for me. Uh, Troy Huddleston, uh, he was a big fan fanatic and I told him, I was like, man, I, I need some windows for this thing, but I don't want the cookie cutter windows that everybody has that you just buy off the shelf. I, I want something special. And, and uh, he knew what my theme was to my truck and the American flag door panels and stuff like that. And uh, he's like, man, I'm still a uh, member of a lot of these different van groups. So I can, uh, I'll, I'll put out a, a post in my van group to see if I can help you find anything. And uh, we ended up finding some uh, some awesome star-shaped uh, van windows. I got four of them. I put two of them in the truck and saved two of them for spares in case I'd ever have to break one or, or have problems with them. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that looks great. We're getting a look at those now with the... Uh back side of that sleeper and it's a shame that uh, the four states doesn't make that you know, sleeper anymore you always get the people that ask why don't you paint it and, uh, and I always tell them I just you know I put a new paint job on the cab ran out of money before I got the sleeper the nice thing about this bunk though is uh, I've got one of the Odyssey mattresses in here it's Real good and comfortable to sleep on. We've got room for storage. Did a set of uh, Iowa Customs. Did a set of their cabinets in here with a refrigerator. And uh, now I've got room. I, uh, my, my youngest daughter, Jolie, she raises chickens. So I uh, I usually hard boil some eggs and, and take some stuff like that from home with me. Keep it in my refrigerator. And, and uh, 
feed the truck and have room to put my clothes and, and I have a good comfortable bed to sleep in at night and this now compared to what I had before. So talking about themes, you mentioned themes. Uh, you said Troy Huddleston, you know, rest in peace Troy, we miss you. Uh, he knew the theme of your truck. So tell us what, what is the theme of your truck? You got a lot going on there on the inside and a lot of cool stuff to look at there on the outside as well. Yes sir, we're out of Missouri. Route 66, the mother road, uh, runs through uh, our state there. When I first started hauling cars, I was running in and out of Chicago. About the majority of our business is up and down through the Midwest, running Texas, and, well, we go all the way out to California and all. So we wanted to pay tribute to the mother road, Route 66 in America, a little better time in our uh, our country than what, uh, what we're seeing nowadays. But uh, that, that was the theme we wanted to go with the truck is pay tribute to the mother road. Well, that's a good theme, a good purpose for the theme too. Uh, the Mother Road, uh, Route 66. I believe I've seen some, you know, lots of photos of your truck out west, uh, sitting over the top of one of the uh, uh, painted road signs uh, for Route 66. Sir, that's one thing that I get asked about a lot is where that's at. Anybody's uh, needing to find it, they're running across I-40 out in the desert before you get to Barstow. Route 66 will interweb to the north and south of the interstate. You can get off about anywhere and get your get your picture, but it's a pretty rough road. I wouldn't stay over there on it. Yes, sir. got there on the on the trailer uh, where are you going with it uh, heading down to a little place called saving old steel uh, down here in brookfield they uh they restore a lot of classics and hot rod cars kind of the thing that they're into and they uh they bought these at an auction up in hammond indiana yeah and, and what are you guys normally doing Oh, my bad. I forgot. You got to go through some gears. <laughs> Uh, specialize in uh, normally different stuff that will not fit on a traditional car hauler is what we advertise as. All right, give us uh, some examples. We do a lot of the high top vans. We do uh, utility trucks, bucket trucks. Um, these these trailers work good for these specialty type vehicles like this. I, I've got an old Packard on here right now that's sitting on a Corvette frame, sitting extremely low to the ground. Uh, and plus it's a lot longer so you imagine loading a, a standard corvette how low they sit to the ground then you add about three or four foot to the frame of it and it makes it a challenge to load without, without messing anything up but we haul semi trucks dump trucks uh, we've got to do some really neat stuff in doing what we do two years ago i hauled a uh, cab over transtar into gas monkey garage down in dallas that richard rawlings bought and I uh, even got to, to take the time to try to teach him how to drive it while I was out there. Well, I bet you that was an experience, huh? Yeah, well, man, yeah, I think that you're just gonna pull in there and uh, kick something off and be gone in 10, 15 minutes. And they uh, they come out and they're like, hey, would you mind us filming? And then uh, one question led to another and, and uh, he was excited as a kid in a candy store, you know, getting a new toy like that. Uh, he, he was wanting to take it out and, and take it for a ride and, and uh, nobody there had a clue of uh, what it was or how to drive it or how to shift it and uh, I volunteered to, to take him and uh, we ended up throwing some cameras in the truck and a drone in there and uh, went for a ride and uh, yeah it, it was a blast. Sounds like a lot of fun. I'll, I'll put a link to that particular episode in the description.
Yeah, you miles trees down there. Make for some good pictures. There, beautiful little drive through here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the neighborhood to the to the north, uh, to our right, has lots of really great cobblestone roads. And it's really, really historic. I'm going to turn my gap back there. You're good. So, well, this is the first, Terry. Uh, I've done hopped in the truck with you after you uh, made your first drop there. Yes, sir. I yep. think I haven't had you long. Yeah, yeah. This is this is cool. It's been a while since I it's been a it's been a good length of time in a in a semi truck cruising around. Your next pickup is close enough to uh, where you dropped off. You know, we're going down the Clearwater, so I'm like, hey, well, it's a beautiful day. Why not hop in the truck and we can actually you know finish our con or continue our conversation? Yes, sir. You know, one of the first things that came to mind was uh, was truck show stuff and. Uh, you're asking me what what I thought I had in mind for you know truck shows to go to this year. Definitely the time of year everybody starts planning out yes. and making their hotel arrangements. A lot of them, yep. you know, hotels will sell out within you know 50, 60 miles of some of the bigger shows. So it, it's always uh, good to start making plans now to which ones you want to hit. Yeah, it's it's February 14th. Uh, happy Happy Valentine's Day to you. Happy Valentine's Day. To you. <laughs> um, so yeah, we are just. Uh, a half a month away from, you know, well, actually a full month away. You know, Mats is normally one of the shows that kind of designates the start of the show season. The later in the year, the Mayberry Truck Show is going to be another, another show. Uh, but I'd like to kind of pop into some other smaller shows, maybe announced, maybe unannounced. You never know. Uh, just just kind of see what's going on with with some of the the uh, smaller shows in the, the Midwest. So what 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 how about yourself? Um, we've been talking and trying to decide for sure what we're going to do. Our truck is kind of, it, it's not at really that top tier to compete at levels like Matt's, but we always like to go to Matt's and, and visit with people that we haven't seen all year that become like family. Yeah. And uh, so we, we will more than likely be popping in down there. But as far as shows that we actually want to go to, uh, St. Agnes has always been on our list. We'd love to do that convoy across the Mackinac Bridge. Uh, and just to kind of see what the rest of your brings. Super Rigs just announced that they're going to be at the Texas Motor Speedway. That's right. That's and, another uh, that I'm going to go to. We uh, we really wanted to go to there when uh, when they canceled it the year of COVID, and uh, so now that it's coming back, uh, we, we would we would love to go. Um, you know, this this truck uh, was uh, fortunate enough to get a calendar spot uh, last year with Shell. Uh, so it wouldn't be eligible for a calendar spot uh, going this year, but who knows? We may show up with something different if we end yeah. up going down there. So, uh, but yeah, you uh, just talking about some of the smaller shows. Uh, you mentioned Busted Knuckle is as a possibility. That's always a great show. Uh, Tanner and, and uh, Kyla and, and them uh, guys out there are a great group of people. Uh, great photo opportunities. They just put in some neon uh, palm trees. So you'll feel right at home. Oh, and, sweet. And, uh, 
you get to see some of the old classic trucks that show up out there and, and uh, just a really laid back good show. That That's one that uh, we never really got to go to because we always did four states the week after that and it was hard to, uh, to do both of them back to back and, and take off and shut down work almost two weeks solid just being at a truck show. Yeah. Uh, so now that four states has switched to every other year, it gives you the opportunity if, if you like and enjoy both of them, you can kind of alternate and, and uh, see what both of them has to offer. So. Yeah. The wife and I uh, hosted a show uh, for two years. Uh, we, we skipped this past year uh, due to a lo issue finding a good solid location. Yeah. But uh, people don't realize the planning and stuff that goes in, into it and, and the amount of effort and time it takes to get the word out there, promote, uh, sponsorships just to cover your cost to put it on and, and uh, make a good show. It, it's, it's a huge undertaking. So uh, I have much respect for Brian for the uh, the show that they put on and, and can totally understand why he's had to back it up to an every other year thing. And then speaking of, you know, getting uh, finding shows and going to other shows, I've not really said much on camera about the project that I've been working on the last uh, last year but it's called the truck show list. Some of you may have heard, heard of it. Uh, you may have seen some, you know, some posts, but the shows were popping up so quick and that's super awesome that there's a lot of different shows and new shows, that's really great. But it was getting hard to keep up with them, honestly. And folks would ask me if I had heard of a show or my thoughts on something. And I, I really couldn't give them an answer because I didn't really know. So I decided uh, at the beginning of last year, 2023, to you know use some of the other skills that I have, which is web development, and build a website that was specifically for uh, listing truck shows and information about truck shows. Uh, I saw one thing where you get a flyer for a show, and it's a good-looking flyer. It's got some cool trucks on it. You know, come to our truck show. But then you look for like where the um, address is. Or, yeah, a lot of them don't even have the town on it. Yeah. They, they they forget the obvious yes. stuff, you know. Yeah, you know, the addresses or something, you know, you know, or times or whatever, and you're searching up and down looking for the information. So I'm like, you know what? I want to build a website that formates or formats all of the information where it's going to be in the same place every single time. So if you just kind of you know need to go like, well, when is that show? Well, let me go on that list and oh yeah, it's you know the weekend or whatever. So the truck show list has a calendar, um, a, a geographical map, a Google map, and all this kind of stuff. Have you been able to peek at it yet? I, I have. Uh, the wife and I actually looked at it this past weekend uh, when we were trying to decide where we were going to go and kind of what plans we were going to make for the year. So, And, uh, yeah, hopefully that will work out good. I can see where that would be a good tool for, for the trucking industry. We always have people ask us, you know, hey, what shows are you doing? Or where can I go to find out what shows are out there? And then yeah. this will be the answer to that question. And hopefully later on, uh, I know with a lot of shows that we go to, they have uh, hotels that are that are part of the show. They may give you a block of rooms or yeah. something like that. So hopefully later on, you'll be able to integrate that where you yeah. can go on there, pick your show, click the link to the motel discounts and yeah. kind of do everything all there in one stop. So I can see where that'd be a great tool to develop. Yeah, absolutely. And with some of the, and this shameless plug time, but some of the shows that are featured shows, there's a lot more information that, that is listed, you know, as far as hotels and things of that nature. But well, a step further would be to, to make it where a driver can, you know, a person can click a link. I mean, I want to make it as useful as possible, honestly. So any other ideas, you know, like you just mentioned, yes, you know, I'll implement them. And I also built in a, like a, a business directory because I see online like guys go like, well, where's the, the best place to get some vendors? Or the, where's the best place to get this? Uh, so I've built a business directory where it's trusted businesses, businesses that are geared toward trucking and trucking industry. You got a working truck, you go there, you, you have a light go out or you, or you, uh, you know scratch a fender or you yeah. mess up a bumper. That stuff happens when we're out here working these trucks mm -hmm. every day. And, it's nice to know where's the local chrome shop, yeah. you know, who's, who's got stuff, or yeah. where's the best steakhouse in town, or where can I get some tacos? Well, that's next. <laughs> uh, that is next, now that you mention it. I do want to build in um, and list all of the really truck-friendly, you know, preferably family-owned mom-and-pop uh, restaurants that have, you know, good truck parking and other amenities, because we know what it's like. Well, you guys know what it's like. We're pulling to a place, you know you're going to get some good treatment, you know, get some good parking you know, get some good food and stuff like that. 
And I think it'd be great to have a list of those things too, where you can look at them on a map. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we can go on and on about truck shows and stuff, but what, what's your favorite show? No, uh, now that we're on, since we're on this topic. <laughs> well, that, that puts a guy on the spot. Um, that, that, that is a tough one. Uh, one of my uh, favorite ones that uh, that uh, we, we just talked about was Wapan. Uh, that one was a very family uh, friendly event and I hated to hear that this year is going to be the last year for it. That was uh, one where they kind of welcomed you in with open arms and they had so much activities and stuff for the kids to do. Uh, you see top of the line trucks, some of the best truck builders in the country are, are in that area. You got uh, Vinny up there with Roland, uh, you got Steve Moss up in that area, yeah. and you've got some really heavy hitters that bring in yeah. some of the top iron in the country at that show. But a lot of those guys step out and they say, hey, we're here for display only. Yeah. And they let the guys that, uh, you know, maybe has one or two trucks and, and they bring their kids to the show, they let them walk away with the trophies. And it's a great feel and a great show. Yeah. Um, Four States has always been uh, been uh, one of the one of the great shows that that uh, we loved going to. Uh, it was the first show that we took our uh, daughter Jolie to. She was just a few months old when uh, when we took her there the first time. Yeah. Uh, and they're they're, uh, they're one of our home based uh, chrome shops that's close to us, and they've always supported us and everything that we uh, we ever did. Uh, there's a small show that I don't think made your list, or, or if it did, I didn't see it on there, that was in February in Peoria. It's the Midwest Trucking Association show. Yep, that was on and, there. Uh, that, that one there, uh, Matt Wells and, and that group are, are outstanding people. Their hospitality is great. It's a very small show. Uh, there's usually 20, 25 trucks show up in. That's an it's indoor, an indoor show, right? show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's in February. It's yeah. usually super cold every time you go up there uh, and you freeze to death getting your truck prepped for it. Yeah. But their hospitality is above and beyond and, and they've always made us feel like home. One of my shows that I really enjoy is the, um, it's the, the show that happens in, in Biloxi that is the Gulf Coast Big Rig Truck Show. I've heard a lot about it. I heard it's right on the beach. Yes. Like you literally walk out of the convention center and the beach is sitting uh, right there in front of you. Yeah, so that's a that's a four charity show. It's air conditioned, lots of space indoors. Uh, I mean, all the folks that are in that region, you know, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, I love those guys. They're just so, so, so awesome. I look forward to going to that show all the time. Uh, so that's that's real half of my list in terms of favorites. Um, Great Cajun food, I'm sure. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, and then outside of that, you know, G bats. You know, every other year that's a favorite. But the Mayberry Show has, has become a favorite of mine too, just because of how it's you know how they developed the show from the ground up. Credit has to go back to you know Mitchell Bottomley and the Bottomley staff. Um, you know, being able to you know open up their entire facility. To, to accommodate, you know, trucks and everything, you know, the things that they go through to, to uh, you know, facilitate that show, you know, moving out all their trucks to make room for us to come in there, but it's clean, lot, just lots of room for everything, lots of food, and it's a good time. From a driver's standpoint, I will say his convoy, and a lot of times <clears throat> I don't participate in the convoys just because of how unorganized I've seen them at different locations, yeah. and a lot of times, you're stuck in the truck for an hour, hour and a half, your knees are sore from stopping and going. Yeah. They get separated, broke up and all. I will say yeah. that that convoy out there at Mitchell's was one of the smoothest, cleanest run convoys I've ever been a part yeah. of. Yeah. Terry, what, what have we uh, picked up back there? We picked up a couple of uh, aerial bucket trucks that are going uh, to be, tr uh, they're used, they're going to uh, do a business in uh, Nashville, Tennessee area. Okay. That's kind of more along the lines of what we're used to hauling. We do a lot of bucket trucks, utility trucks, different stuff like that that's, you know, bigger bigger units that won't fit on a traditional car hauler. Uh-huh. All right, right on. And so, like, this earlier this morning, we were talking on the radio and you know, I didn't get into any of your history. A lot of folks already know who you are, but for the folks that don't know you, you know, how'd you uh, how'd you get into trucking? 
Um, I used to go with my grandfather on my mother's side from the time I was a little kid. He run uh, LTL freight out of the airport uh, back in the day for a company called Pure Later Carriers, which I think ended up getting bought out by several other companies and then ended up, uh, I think FedEx was the one that ended up buying them out in the end, but uh, he used to run air freight from St. Louis through Southeast Missouri uh, every day and then back up and, and uh, I used to ride with him and then uh, after he uh, had retired from doing that, uh, I had an uncle that uh, was a, a wholesale car dealer and uh, my grandfather drove for him uh, running a little hot shot going around picking up his uh, cars that he bought and sold. And uh, he had kind of kind of put the bug in my ear about how he uh, he was uh, wishing he was younger. He would get into it and uh, kind of give me the ideal and uh, took it and ran with it. And uh, I uh, I bought my first uh, truck. I, I bought a, a Dooley pickup when I was uh, 18 uh, in a three car trailer and. Uh, couldn't run out of state legally until you was 21, so I had not for hire road on my back glass and, and uh, hauled cars for a few years before I was actually legal. I, I had the proper insurance and all, but, but uh, wasn't supposed to be running out of state. And then when I got my first uh, semi truck, uh, that, that was uh, one of the uh, the things that, that my grandpa helped me do was uh, taught me how to shift gears and stuff like that. and, and uh, Rode with me to, uh, to go take my uh, CDL test. So interesting story on that uh, when I bought my first semi I had uh, I had heard that there was a waiting list to get your CDL and uh, I had called the state of Missouri and asked them about it and uh, I had they, you know found out what the process was you had to take your written test pass your written test and then you go take your skills test and you got your CDL right. so I went and took my written test and passed it had my permit uh, called them up to find out about this waiting list I had heard about and the, the person I had on the phone said oh no there's no waiting list at, at all you just you know we do it every Thursday uh -huh. this was on a Tuesday so I went and traded my dually on a single axle road tractor and uh, brought it home called them back and, and uh, told them that I you know had my truck and everything needed to schedule my test there was a, a two-week wait before I could take my test when uh -huh. I called back to actually schedule it and uh, I was a young kid starting out. I did not have the money to sit unemployed for two weeks. So I ran that truck for about a month and a half without a CDL because I, uh, I failed the pre-trip the first couple of times taking uh -oh. the test. So. <laughs> well, I, I like to think about the statutes of limitations have run out on those things. <laughs> well, I actually got, that's one of the only tickets on my record. If, if you pull it up is uh, I have a ticket for not having my CDL in my possession, not for not having a CDL, but for not having it in my possession. But, back during that time. Well, that's so. cool. Yep. I tell you but, what. Uh, come from humble beginnings. Yeah. You know, I, I started out with absolutely uh, nothing and still have most of it left. So. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, that's cool. Uh, what's been uh, your favorite truck that you've owned during that time? Um, I've had several. This is the longest I've ever had any truck is this one here. Uh, and there's a lot of things that's special about it uh, as far as you know, I, I did truck shows with this truck uh, with, with my kids the, the entire time they were growing up and, and uh, just the memories made and all this, this will definitely always hold a special place. Um, we built a turquoise cab over that, that some people may remember. Uh, it was a beautiful truck. My wife picked the colors on it. Um, that was one of the first ones that we ever had a, a national level win with. We, uh, we picked up a Shell Rotella calendar spot uh, with that truck. Uh, that was actually uh, on my daughter's uh, birthday. And uh, that truck was very special. Uh, I ended up, I owned that truck twice, sold it twice, and regretted it both times. Oh, really? Wow. So moving to the, to the inside here, there's a, there, there's a lot of stickers. There's a lot to look at here. Uh, tell me about uh, tell me about your sticker collection. Sure, uh, it started out with just the four or five across the visor. Uh, a lot of us guys started trading stickers at, at truck shows and stuff. We would have ones with picture of our truck or a little logo, uh, something like that. I, I noticed that at one point in time you even got in on the game. I've got one of yours up there. 
and uh, started, uh, you know, I started out with some motivational hard hat stickers, uh, uh -huh. some things to keep me motivated when maybe I was having a rough day or down, and, and you know, like the, the don't quit and, uh, you know, results over excuses and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And then this collection kind of grew, uh, getting different stickers and trading different stickers at shows with uh, that, that had some meanings and some yeah. memories still. Yeah, so. right on. Yeah, I'll see. I'm, I'm sure everyone else is seeing the interior of other guys' visors or the back side of the visor is usually littered with stickers and stuff. So that's that's always pretty cool to, to check out. There's been a substantial change, you know, a lifestyle change. Um, tell us about what, how you've gotten to the point where you wanted to make a lifestyle change and what you what you did. Sure. Um... I had a uh, mini gastric bypass surgery, so did my wife. Uh, well, I think we're about five years out right now. Uh, it drastically changed our life for the better. Um, I uh, was extremely overweight. I tried dieting. Uh, and doing what I do, car hauling, you get a lot of exercise. We walk a lot to get our cars. There's times we pull in an auto auction. And uh, if we load five cars, we, we may walk two and a half, three miles. It, it's not uncommon to do that. And that's one of the things when people come to work for me, I, I give them a heads up and warning about that, that this job is physically, you know, and, and a, uh, a job that, that's demanding. Uh -huh. uh, I was in okay health, even though I was a, a big guy, but I, I, I was up around 325 pounds when I decided to, to, that something had to give and had to change. Uh, I had sleep apnea, uh, that, that's something a lot of people in our industry have and, and, and fight with. Uh, my sleep was horrible, I uh, didn't feel well rested, was tired all the time, uh, and I started having some blood pressure issues. Uh, I went on some blood pressure medicine, didn't like uh, a lot of the side effects and stuff that came with blood pressure medicine, and uh, I decided I was going to do something different, and uh, my first thought was, you know, Money's always tight and, and uh, certain things I'll splurge on. Uh, you know, I've got a nice truck, nice vehicles and stuff like that, but in a lot of ways, I'm a tight Nobody wants to spend money on a doctor, <laughs> and then, yeah. even though it's important to you. Yeah. And uh, I, I had decided, I, I come home and I, I told the wife, I, you know, I said, I, I'm going to Mexico and gonna get this surgery done. Uh, and she argued with me. She's like, you are not going to Mexico and getting that done. She's like, you, you'll end up dying down there, you know? And we argued about it for a good little bit. And uh, I was like, I, I have some friends that went to Mexico and had this done and they had good results. They, they lost weight, you know, they, they didn't have any problems and all that. And uh, I had found the hospital, everything out, and, and I was like, if you can find me one bad review, just one, from that hospital, I won't go. Within about 10 minutes of her Googling, she had about 40 bad reviews and horrible side effects and yeah. different, different stuff of how dangerous it was. So we decided that that was not a, a good, good path to take. Uh -huh. um, Around the same time, my office manager, uh, Miss Sherilyn, and, and uh, can't say enough good about her. Uh, we, we've been friends since. We used to play cars, Hot Wheels, in uh, kindergarten together on the playground, and we're still playing cars together every day. So nice. that, that's uh, something pretty special. But uh, she had had some, uh, she was starting to have some uh, major heart issues and getting fluid on her heart. And the doctor told her that if she didn't lose some weight and lose a substantial amount in a pretty short amount of time, that she wouldn't live to, to see 40. You know, it, it was gonna kill her. Right. Uh, so she had found uh, a doctor out of Joplin, Dr. Hargrover, and uh, went to him and had the procedure done that I ended up having done too. Okay. Uh, she was the first one I knew to have it done. There was another gentleman uh, there in, in our hometown, him and his wife both had it done. Uh, they were in the trucking industry too. Uh -huh. And uh, everybody had great results out of it. I was a little skeptical, talked to him about the price. It, it sounded kind of high, but then I got to thinking, it's like, you know, for the quality of lifestyle change, for what it's benefiting me, what I can do with my kids, you know, I, I couldn't go to a water park, I couldn't go to Six Flags and ride rides with my kids, I couldn't go to a water park and ride water slides with my kids. You go to a water slide that's got a 225, you know, weight limit, and, and you got an 80 pound kid, you're not getting on the, the ride with them. And, yeah. and uh, if, if I went to even the, the zoo or something like that with my kids, you know, they're walking around looking at the animals. I'm walking around looking for the next bench to sit down and let, let my feet rest for a little bit because my ankles hurt and, and I was out of breath and winded and tired and it was miserable. It wasn't enjoyable. I wasn't enjoying the quality of life that I wanted. Yeah. 
uh, and I don't know what he, where he's at now on them, but you know, four or five years ago, it, it was high, but it, it was affordable. And I went and talked to him about it, uh, did the uh, did the deal, and uh, my wife again, she was a little skeptical. She got on there and she Googled and 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 did a lot of research, and didn't find anything in a half an hour. Didn't find anything in two or three days of looking. She couldn't find one negative review. And uh, when we talked to the doctor, one of the things that I was impressed about is. It was a little annoying maybe at first, but they make you join a Facebook group, that, that, and I hate Facebook groups, you know, the group messaging thing and all that, but you join a Facebook group, yeah. and you have to talk to 10 people that's had this done before you can qualify to have the surgery done. Yeah. That way you know exactly what you're getting yeah. into, no surprises, no hidden deals like that, no, uh, you know, they're not waving some magic wand that's going to fix all your problems. And I will say that, that it's a tool. It, it's not a fix all. It's not a, you don't have to put any effort, but it's a tool that totally resets your system. Uh -huh. So um, when I went in there and talked to them about getting it done, it, they're like, you know, we offer a substantial discount if a couple will do it together, uh -huh. they, if both need it, because a couple that will do it together will keep each other on track more. So we decided to do it together. I think uh, at the time you had to do it, uh, the, the, the second one had to do it within six or eight months of, of the first one. And, yeah. and uh, I, I will tell you the first three days after surgery, was very painful. It, yeah. it was one of them deals where you lay there and you're hurting. It felt like somebody beat me with a bat, and uh, <laughs> and I was like, "What in the hell did you do to yourself?" You know. Yeah. But um, I uh, I went from 325 pounds uh, at, at my heaviest to I dropped down to 180, and then I maintain around that 190 to 200 mark right now. Uh -huh. It fluctuates, you know, five to ten pounds up and down throughout the year. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, sleep apnea is totally gone. Blood pressure is totally normal. And I've had very limited problems out of anything. Uh, carbonated drinks uh, are, are a no-go for me. Some people can handle them, I can't. Uh, milk, uh, I can no longer handle. And, and I kind of hate that at times, ice cream and milk, because I, I, I was an ice cream junkie and, and loved my cookies and milk. And, and uh, uh, milk's no longer a, a go. It just, it, you know, don't agree with me. And, and sits really heavy. But other than that, and uh, that's kind of what started the whole taco thing is uh, heavy breads and rolls and buns okay. and stuff like that you can't really do. So flatbread, tacos was always a safe thing or, or like uh, when, when you're on your uh, your soft diet for the first few weeks after surgery, yeah. you know, you can go in and get refried beans and rice and, and stuff like that. So that kind of started uh, started the, the path down, uh, down, down that direction. But uh, we have had uh, several close friends that has used us as an example and seen what we done and uh, went and, and uh, had the same thing done too in the trucking community. Uh, Matt Nablock uh, up in Chicago just reached his goal weight uh, this past week, uh, getting below 200 pounds for the first time since high school. I know Jamie Williams uh, up there in Springfield, I, 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 him and his daughters both had it done now. Jamie had his done uh, first, but I, I, I know he's down well over 100 pounds and uh, I, I may be closer to two that he lost. And uh, just as a whole different person, and, and has a, a ton more energy and all too. Yeah. So it, it, anybody that struggles with weight, because I tried the whole diet and exercise thing. I was getting my exercise in my truck. I was dieting. I uh, I, I totally eliminated fast food. I eliminated sodas, um, and and I just I did not lose the weight. And. Uh, one of the things that the doctor explained is how like calorie count works and how your body works. And a lot of times when you go on a diet, your body thinks that it's starving. So it starts storing everything that, that uh, for, for fat, thinking that, that, that you're starving it. So then it makes it that much harder to lose weight. My wife uh, being at home, she was going to the gym uh, four to six times a week and dieting and wasn't losing anything. And, and uh, so both of us has had great success with it. And I highly recommend it to anybody that's having sleep apnea issues or, or high blood pressure issues or any of the other issues that a lot of drivers out here are, are, are plagued with. It, it's one of them things that, yes, it's a high investment, but I will say it's one of the, the best investment I ever made in myself. And if I'm able to work another even six months at the end of my life, it more than pays for it. But yeah. if the quality of life uh, over the next few years 
you just really can't put a, uh, a price on that. Yeah. So. I got a chance to talk with the doctor this morning. That's the, the practice that's sponsoring this video. And he mentioned that some of the comorbidities uh, would be, you know, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes. And he says, you know, right after these, uh, right after the procedure, those things are gone. I'm not going to speak at length because obviously I'm not a physician, but I'd love to be able to, you know, follow up with him and and have him, you know, talk, you know, specifically about those things. And so, so for you though, you mentioned that those things, you know, went away for you. It, it's amazing how fast they go away. Like within a week, I was off my blood pressure medicine. That's awesome. Uh, my wife, uh, her family had a history of heart disease, and uh, and that was one thing. It totally resets your cardiovascular health. You know, wow. it it absolutely resets the clock on it. You know, heaven forbid if. 10 years down the road from right now, if I show up with cancer or some other disease that's causing me to rapidly lose weight and I'm not absorbing as much weight and then I start getting too thin or something like that, everything that I've had done is totally reversible. So they can go in there and take out that bypass, hook things back up, and I can absorb the same amount type uh, of food and nutrients that was originally going into my body. So that's the big advantage of the, the MGB is you have no form foreign matter in your body, everything's still there, nothing's removed, so it can be put back to the way it was if you ever have to have it done. And like drawbacks and negatives, you know, the dairy, the ice cream thing is a little bit of a, and it's an annoyance, um, you know, it's, it's because it's a lifestyle change. Uh, do I miss sitting down and eating a, a great big steak or something like that? Sure, sometimes mentally you, you may, but now I, I've learned to do uh, quality over quantity. Yeah. So now if I go to a steakhouse, instead of getting, you know, a, a big bone-in porterhouse, you know, that's 20 something ounces, yeah. I'll get a filet that may be six ounces that's yeah. extremely quality meat that I can cut with a fork and savor the quality because at the end of that it, it's full. I may not even have room for all of it. I, I may take half of it with me and, yeah. and uh, eat it later on. Yeah. So. That's cool. I hope a lot of guys that hear what you've done and how it's worked for you, I hope they like kind of just peek through the door and say, hey, well, I, maybe I should, you know, call up the doctor and, and speak with him. Yes. And just to see, you know, if that's something that they obviously, you know, that that's going to work for them. And a lot of people think, well, you know, this doctor's out of Missouri. You know, why why would I call a doctor out of Missouri when I'm from Houston or when I'm from Nebraska or when I'm from Iowa or somewhere like that? Doctor H has has done surgeries for people from all over the world has, has traveled into him because of how good his program is, and and he's one of the few out there that that has the the reviews and stuff that he has and has built the community around what he has. We got some time to kill yet. We're probably about a half an hour, you know, away from, from home base, you know, my home base. It's kind of weird saying that being in the passenger seat, but I'm going to run down the list of questions that I normally ask guys in these rolling CB interviews and, and we'll see, uh, see what your thoughts are and your responses are to, uh, to these questions. So, uh, what, what's one of the most useful things for a driver to have on their truck? Uh, GPS, truck GPS is, is a blessing and a curse. Uh, you have to use it with common sense, but it has made finding locations in town that, that don't stick out a lot better and a lot easier. Um, I always tell new drivers to ha carry some basic hand tools with you because you never know when something minor will happen that, that even if you just have the basic skill set to, to do to change a belt, change an alternator, stuff like that's very easy to do if you've got some basic tools. If you can afford it and do it, uh, the cordless impacts are great, uh, but 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 a, just a good cheap basic tool set that you can get for a few hundred bucks, I, I recommend that, uh, that all drivers you know carry that carry those with them. Even if it, it costs you the same, your time that you you save waiting on somebody else to come out and do it for you you know you wait waiting two or three hours to get into a shop or waiting an hour for a service truck to call up and and, and all that if, if you can get to the parts and get the stuff fixed yourself it, it's money well spent got it makes sense uh some of these questions are they're not in order so i'm just gonna i'm gonna read off my little cheat sheet list here and normally i have these in you know stored in mind but i got i'm in the passenger seat i'm gonna enjoy you know being able to read here uh do you have a cb or handle 
Um, I don't. Uh, you know, I, I did the trucking for tacos thing. That, that's what my uh, my uh, go-to is on uh, my social media stuff, uh, on TikTok and, and stuff like that. If you uh, if you like seeing the footage that you're seeing today, we post a lot of uh, goofy videos, a lot of funny stuff like that, or, or, or different little jokes and stuff like that. But, uh, you, you know, a lot of our loads and stuff, we, we post pictures on there. Uh, okay. What uh, type of CB radio do you run? Uh, right now I run a General Lee. I had a Galaxy in here for a long time and it just, it never worked right from the time I, I got it. And uh, I had a few CB shops check it out and it didn't have any swing to it, which I don't even know what swing is. I'm not a CB guy at all. And uh, I, I talked to Bob's up at Lake Station, Indiana. They're a uh, great little chrome shop up there and he has a CB shop as well. And I told him, it's like, you know, I don't use side bands. I don't use any of that crazy stuff. I just want a good, basic, easy to use radio to talk on. Yeah. And uh, he recommended the General Lee, uh, shipped it to me. Very simple plug and play and, and uh, does, does a good job. Yeah, right on. What type of trucking content do you watch? Like, so when it's downtime, what are you, what are you watching? Um, when it's downtime, trucking content, big rig videos, of course. I mean, you didn't have to say uh, that. I mean, you could have you could have said something else. It, it, it's uh, it's always good entertainment. Uh, I, I follow a lot of people on TikTok. I like the uh, the content that has some jokes and stuff to it. That it's uh -huh. not serious all the time and. Okay. Uh, not the drama and the bitching and the, the going on and stuff like that, but yeah. but stuff that that's uh, humorous content okay. is is, uh, is is more what I, I tend to spend my time with. So. Okay. What is your claim to fame? Oh, I, you know, it, it has amazed me how many people know me from what I do as far as the car hauling and my involvement with uh, these Sun Country trailers and. Uh, you know, it's not anything that you set out to do, but uh, you know, you, you find what you do and, and what you love and, and you do it and do it well. Yeah. And uh, and if you do it well and, and consistently long enough, you, you get well known for it. And uh, I, I guess that's probably about the best answer I could give you for that. You know, this makes uh, 25 years of, of car hauling uh, this past year. Uh, it's going into our 26th year now. Uh, I still very much love what I do most of the time. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to leave your family and say goodbye and go out here and, and uh, make a living on the road. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, I am able to provide a good living for my family and, and a nice home and, and uh, good safe vehicles for, the, for us to drive. And, and uh, my, my wife's fortunately able to, to be a stay at home mom because of my career and the sacrifices that I make. And it's a team effort. I couldn't do what I do with, without her and, and vice versa. Yeah. And uh, it, it works good for our situation. And, and uh, that's, uh, that's about, about the best thing I know to, for that there. But uh, I, I still still get a lot of enjoyment out of it. What was the worst load that you've ever pulled? Uh, the worst load that I ever pulled that just instantly popped into my mind. And, and it's one of them that you, you never forget when you do it. Uh, for several years, I used to pull seven car trailers. That was a little different business model than this. And we did repos and lease returns is all we, we hauled. Uh -huh. And we, we took them into uh, Des Auto Auction in Kansas City. That's who we had the contract for. Uh -huh. And as a dad, um, there was one that I picked up and hauled in that broke my heart. And it's one of them that, that about bring a tear to my eye, even now talking about it, and it's been probably 20 years ago. Yeah. It was a, uh, a uh, Ford Lightning pickup that uh, dad was going through a custody battle and things wasn't going right and he ran it into a wall and took his life and oh, killed no. his kid in the car oh. and we hauled that into the auction with the biohazard stuff on it knowing the story behind it yeah. and that's something that always really got me yeah. that how could anybody do that to do yeah. their own you know yeah. What's the, the most charitable thing that you've been able to do with uh, with a business or the truck? Um, the most charitable thing that we did, the wife and I uh, uh, co-hosted a uh, truck show event for two years to raise money for uh, for children with autism and, and to get a school going. And uh, we were able to, the first year, raise uh, a little over $40,000, which for a first year truck show was just unheard of. Yeah. 
Uh, second year didn't do quite as good, but the economy really has taken a turn and people don't have the extra money to spend. Uh, but it, but it's just the, the pouring out of the community and what we were able to give back and, and introduce the community to the people that we consider friends and family in the trucking industry and, and bring the quality of trucks that we were able to bring into our hometown. Uh -huh. Well, that's cool. So what's one of the most important lessons that you've learned in trucking? Uh, that everything changes, you know, your, your worst day is only 24 hours long, you know, it, it, everything changes in this industry. You have to plan ahead. Um, so many people get into this business and they, they, the money starts rolling in from an owner operator standpoint and they see the big checks and they start spending big money and the next thing you know they're broken out of business. Yeah. Um, I always pay my, I, I pay on commission, I, I pay my company drivers 25% of whatever the truck grosses uh -huh. and I stress to my new owner operators and my, my company drivers that later become owner operators because we want to see that transition, we want to see that change, we want you to build a success, we want to help you build your dreams and if I can mentor you to go on and go forward like we've done with other companies in the past. Uh, I had a good friend from high school that started working for me and car hauling wasn't his thing, you know. Uh, I, I helped him, uh, you know, get started and, and he hauled cars for me for a couple years and he's, you know, he's like, hey man, car hauling ain't my thing, it, it's not working out for me. He uh, started hauling some grain and got into hauling farm equipment and he's got a very successful business now hauling farm equipment. We want to see you grow to your potential. What are uh, some of the educational resources that you use? One of the things that I really kick myself for not learning about early on is uh, the fuel saving programs that's out there. There there's several of them out there, and I'd always heard people talk about them. And you know, the, the mega carriers has got mega fuel discounts, and, and it, you, you would be shocked to know what they really pay for fuel and tires compared to an owner operator. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, for years I was with multi service, and you got cash price at the pump, and like that was supposed to be some big savings. And, and uh, you know, at one time I, I thought it was, and, and uh, it, it's hard telling how many hundreds of thousands of dollars over the, the course of my business I wasted not knowing about like fuel saving programs out there. Yeah. There's one basic one that it, 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 that easy for anybody to use and sign up for. It's called Mudflap. It's it's yeah. an app based program. It's not the best savings in the world. When I first started using it, it, it was really significant. But now compared to some of my others, it, it's not. But but it does it, it compared to price at the pump or cash price at the pump, yeah. it's a big savings and it's very simple. To, you download an app, you register your credit card or your bank account to it, and you get a code. You go in there and give it to them at the gas station, and, and you and you you know pay out. It, it's very simple. It literally takes less than five minutes to set up. Anybody can use it. There's no membership fees or anything that you have to go through. Now, I uh, I went through uh, Nastic out of Nashville, and they uh, what they do is they co-op a bunch of owner-operators together and buy fuel like they're a mega carrier. Yep. And uh, to be a part of Nastic, when I signed up, you still had to go through a day course at their, at their uh, training facility in Nashville. I don't know whether it's still that way or not. Either which way, I would recommend doing it all over again if I had to do it again. Yeah. Um, but Nastic, their fuel savings uh, from what I pay at the pump uh, it is just insane. Sometimes it, it's as high as, I, I've seen it as high as a dollar off, but on average it's 50 to 70 cents per gallon off a of diesel. Wow. So, you know, when you're sitting there talking about you know, uh, this morning I, I put a thousand dollars worth of diesel in, in my truck there at Wildwood when I got down here, and, and uh, I'd filled up at home before I left. That's how much fuel it, it cost me to go load my load and, and, and come down here. But uh, you know, in, in reality, when I get my bill for that fuel, it, it's going to be around eight hundred dollars. So that's two hundred dollars in my pocket that will that will go towards some maintenance in the truck. That'll go toward a motel if I want to get a motel and and uh, and uh, get out of the truck a night or something like that. Yeah. But those huge savings uh, really add up at the end of the year, and that, that's something I, I highly recommend for anybody, uh, you know, to, to get into and take advantage of. Yeah. How do you, how do you balance your trucking life versus your home life? Um, I'm fortunate that my wife grew up in the trucking industry as well. Uh, her grandfather and dad both grow, so she's very understanding to the lifestyle and uh, enjoys a lot of things that is trucking related. 
Um, I am fortunate that I get home uh, every weekend, and a lot of times I only work about three weeks a, a, a month anymore and take a full weekend uh, that I work in the office or around the shop or anything like that. And it is a struggle to find a balance of quality time uh, versus, uh, versus just time. Um, but uh, we did truck shows for years as a family. Uh, we, and, and we would make it about the family. If you are selfish and just focus on going to a truck show for a truck show and the things that you want, you're robbing your kids and yourself of a very good time and very good educational uh, purposes. Yeah. When we uh, when we done uh, the, the Dynaflex uh, truck show series where we traveled the entire country from Florida, uh, Indianapolis, Oklahoma City, uh, and ended up in California that year, um, we made it a point to sightsee with our kids everywhere we went. Uh, my brother-in-law uh, had a, had his baby that year. It was our, our first nephew, and uh, my wife was upset and crying because nobody had uh, had went and and, uh, and uh, seen uh, the, the new baby nephew. And I was like, you know, it's like I'll book a load out there if you want to go. I said, but I want to take the truck so I can make money going. And yeah. she said, I'll make you a deal. She said, if you will do that. We'll go through and we'll stop by Oklahoma City and do the truck show on the way back. That way you don't miss the series and stay in the series. Yeah. So we loaded up four kids in a truck. <laughs> we, we took out for two weeks and it was one of the best experiences that we had. We, we went out to Denver. Uh, we went out and seen the mountains. We went to several different parks, uh, went sightseeing, did a lot of uh, things like that. We come back through uh, Amarillo, Texas, did the Big Texan Steakhouse. Uh, we toured Route 66 up through Oklahoma, seen the big blue whale. Uh, we rode the Ferris wheel in Oklahoma City. Um, we just spent that summer really enjoying quality time with our kids and traveling. And the truck show gave us a destination, uh, but it wasn't our sole focus in going where we were going. And uh, we, we found a really good balance in that, and that's some of the best uh, time that I ever had in my life and I hope when my kids are older and they look back they cherish those memories too because I, I think sometimes they have got to travel so much and do so much that it don't really sink in on them that that's not normal and most kids don't get to, yeah. to travel and see the places that they've seen and the yeah. things they've seen. Absolutely. So that sounds like that could have been one of the best times in trucking. So out of the 25 years or more that you've been trucking do you have any regrets any trucking related regrets um not not really a whole lot um you know you can always look back and, and uh, think of decisions or, or different things that you would have could have should have done or, or changes that that you made later that you should have uh, made sooner but at the end of the day you can't change the past you can only learn from it and, and uh take it as a lesson and, and uh, keep stepping forward. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Terry, it's been awesome uh, being able to spend the day with you and hear a lot more about your, your backstory and you know how some of the things have changed in your life and improved in your life. So uh, I appreciate you and uh, we'll see you soon at uh, one of these truck shows uh, coming up pretty soon there, right? I'm riding around with you and y'all have a uh, safe return back to home base there, man. I appreciate everything. All right, man, be safe and uh, we'll see you soon.